welcome back so I was in the shop there last Saturday uh, just before Christmas and just for an hour or so to uh, get a little bit more done on these uh, return lines for the oil feed uh, from the new redrive and there you can see I've got this one now uh, wide in there and with a 90 and that's running an A and 8 line and that runs to the return of the redrive there and I've just got the redrive there sort of mocked in place it's not all bolted together or anything and so here's the other line uh, that was hooked up before and that's the return from the governor and so that one needs to be basically connected up to the same thing and right now I have a 90 on there I have to take off um, so that's going to be uh, my job there for uh, Wednesday after coming back after uh, after the Christmas break so not too much to do there and we're back after Christmas and as promised there I've got this uh, line this return line done from the uh, governor there so as you can see I shortened it and removed the 90 elbow that was on there and just put a straight fitting on there and I got it going into the Y there and I uh, still got to put some uh, ADL clamps on all that to stop those hoses from moving around we don't want them sort of chafing on anything but as you can see uh, all the return lines now are sorted out so uh, and it's they're basically sixes running into an eight so I'm not too worried about uh, it getting clogged up and now we're moving on to the redrive so basically um, in the process now of doing sort of like a final assembly um, it won't be the last time and so here I've taken out the um, that little o-ring seal and putting it back in this time with a little bit of oil on there some people had suggested I should lubricate uh, the o-ring so I figured um, that long one is just as good as a regular round o-ring so I did that and as you can see now I'm putting in um, the uh, well actually I was putting in the, the little oil rings there and trimming off the uh, o-rings there and now putting the new bearings into place these are the ones that I was waiting for uh, new journal bearings so uh, the, the job now is going to be actually you know just to test this thing and make sure that it's working okay um, before we actually put it on the engine again um, you know obviously it's a brand new design I'm a little bit paranoid that something's going to go wrong so I want to unit test everything that I can um, and you know make sure you know I've ha had the best chance possible for success so there you can see I'm putting some oil on where the o-rings sit and uh, dropping those into place and while that's going on I printed out some templates for Devon to use to cut out these new uh, fences for the end of the strake the ones that are going to double as the tie down points there for the wings and uh, he's just cutting them out of um, some eighth inch aluminum there and people had asked but that'll be plenty strong enough for what we want to do and uh, meanwhile they also Jeff and Devon also got this uh, aileron pretty much closed out here that was the one that uh, was pretty much done from before and needed to be modified but that one's done now and I did check those accelerometers to see if there was a chance of short and there actually was in a couple of cases so we removed the one ones in the winglets and um, basically put a little bit of insulation in between them in the way of a bit of FR4 and so we've sorted that problem or potential problem out and uh, here you can see I'm in the process of getting ready to put the drive shaft there into the housing and I'm using some of this uh, STP oil treatment that um, I was recommended to use on the bearings it's quite a bit thicker than the regular oil and it's, it's supposed to be used for you know doing assembly of new engines at least that's how they do it for the continental engines so putting there on the journal bearings and also on the thrust washers and and even on the oil seals there just so everything's kind of you know lubricators as much as it can be and what I want to do once this is together I want to actually test the oil feeds and just make sure that we're getting enough oil feeding through and it's not just running through too much um, and we have enough sort of back pressure on there because ultimately the oil feeding to this is coming from the engine and we don't want to compromise um, the, the engine oil feed by having kind of like a leak in this thing and having it not uh, be able to hold the 60 psi pressure that the engine normally sees for oil feed so uh, that's kind of uh, the test and actually um, you'll see in a minute we 
were uh, lucky enough to uh, have our oven fired up and I was able to actually put this in the oven for a couple of hours to bring it up to 180 degrees and see if it had any difference in how the shaft rotates uh, when the whole thing had been heated up and fortunately um, it didn't have any problems so that's a, that was a good sign that was one test that it passed and now I'm getting ready to actually close it up and I went to the trouble to torque um, all of the bolts which was the four main bearing bolts and also the eight smaller uh, A and 4 bolts on the four on either side torque them to spec uh, to make sure that once it was all torqued up that uh, the shaft was still moving nicely you know without you know feeling like it was uh, locking up at all and uh, it took me a little while just to get get it all torqued up uh, but once it was done there it was actually moving nicely so um, I think all of our clearances are pretty good with respect to that I'm not too worried about that um, but yeah so the the task is now to make sure that our oil feeds are good and you know, make sure that um, you know we're not having too much leak through or anything like that with how the oil feeds through the journal bearings and then onto the thrust washers and of course the other separate feed is the high pressure feed that goes through um, to the prop shaft I wanted to make sure that you know those oil rings that we had in there uh, didn't create a problem so a bunch of testing to do still and uh, anyway, as you can see I'm just getting ready to put the A and 4 bolts there in the flanges and I actu actually am going to put the dowel pins in there, two dowel pins, um, but that'll be uh, next week sometime. And on Thursday we started assembling the oven around the first of the wings there while it's still sitting in the fixture and as you can see it's poked out the top so we had to make a few mods to our oven to allow that to sort of fit in there and as you can see we got it working. We've got it sorted out and got like a little um, kind of like a little uh, gable roof there halfway down um, that's in encompassing or enclosing the um, the wing there the top part of the wing so we fired up the oven on uh, Thursday uh, afternoon and had it run through till Friday morning and we baked not only that wing but one of the ailerons and also the intake scoop and as you can see down there with the control panel uh, we've got it running at 80 degrees uh, Celsius, so 15 hours um, at 80 degrees, and you see it's still just warming up right then. So there's 900 minutes there, and it was 22 minutes in, and it was still sort of coming up to temperature. And I think it was 60 something degrees there, you can see. Um, yeah, so 15 hours like that, and it didn't have any real problems with it. Yeah, you can see 65 degrees on its way up to 80. So uh, yeah, it was, didn't take too long to put the oven together again, getting fairly good at it, manipulating it for various different um, jobs. So it's been an oven and it's been a cool room and it's been a paint booth. So it's actually served us fairly well. And uh, looking through our little um, peak hole here, I'll turn on my infrared camera and you can see what's going on in there. There's the wing. And we're up to the 100. 70 this is a little bit later actually so 175 which is basically 80 degrees celsius in there um on the wing and the other things the other couple of pieces that i said are just sort of sitting on the floor uh, next to that so that's uh, one wing down and so we had the other wing still to do and then later on once the four plane is all done we'll be post curing that as well along with the other aileron and then that'll be it for post curing so getting close on you know finishing a few more different items uh, that needed to be done before we can uh, you know do final assembly and we haven't actually closed out the wing yet we wanted to get it post cured and then we can finish putting um, the electronics in there for the um, the strain gauges and then uh, ultimately uh, close it out and then um, test fit it up to uh, the fuselage and as I mentioned before, I did put the uh, redrive in there for a couple of hours to allow it to warm up. And uh, when I pulled it out, uh, I was able to turn it nicely. So the differences in materials with the aluminum housing and the steel shaft and bearings um, didn't cause any problems with any sort of lockup. So I was happy about that. And as you can see, here's uh, Jeb, uh, Devin and Jeff getting ready to close out this other aileron that they'd been working on for a little while. 
So just putting it back in the mold so it stays all um, nicely in shape. And then closing out the um, bottom skin there with um, some high sole. And there it is with the bottom skin now in place and bonded on. And uh, if you look there that you can see there's the access panel for the aileron trim motor. And the guys are just uh, peeling back or just scraping off the any of the high sole there that's sort of squeezing out from the rear um, join there or the rear seam where the upper and lower skins uh, meet each other. And back to the redrive here I've got it uh, fully torqued up and just to show you there just with one hand I can comfortably turn that there's a little bit of friction in there but as you can see um, you know the journal bearings haven't been sort of uh, you know bedded in yet um, but it does turn nicely and as I said once I put it in the oven it didn't have any other problems with respect to it um, being able to turn like that and uh, lastly I wanted to put in the fittings there for the feeds so I just put a little bit of um, the sealer on those and uh, it's just flexible seal the the black goop that really makes a mess and never really sets up so you've got to wipe it off around everything because you, if you ever touch it later on it just gets everywhere so I put that on both of the fittings and then I'm also doing the drain fitting as well uh, to make sure they stay nice and sealed and uh, so that's basically fully assembled now apart from the brackets to go on there but as I said before, I'm still nervous and I want to test everything that I can. So um, Mark was the one who actually had the idea of putting it in the oven, so uh, that was a good test. And uh, meanwhile, I wanted to get some other things done. So I got the first of the pressure outflow valves there installed in the forward bulkhead. Uh, Devin helped me with getting that all sorted out. It just has um, six AN3 bolts around the side here holding it in. And we just put some RTV around it as well as the rubber gasket that it has in order to get that um, put in there. And now we're on to Friday morning and I've got the redrive um, disassembled again to have a look inside of it after running it through the oven and just checking to see um, you know, how things were looking after turning the shaft quite a bit and uh, just you know, seeing where things are wearing, seeing that I can do this very easily, take it apart. Uh, this is again after everything had been talked, so a good time to inspect everything. And meanwhile, here's the oven now opened up after running that first wing there for 15 hours. And uh, the job now was to disassemble the oven and then just move it to the side and, and uh, reassemble it around the other wing fixture so uh, we could run the other wing. And as you can see here, there's the other wing uh, ready to go. And we're going to put the skin on there as well, put the lower skin on before we put the, uh, the oven up around it. And there it is with the oven up around it. So there's the first one that's already out and have has already been run. And a couple of little things were there. We had a little bit of a, a low spot there on the where the spar is on the wing skin that's going to need a bit of filler. And that's just because w where you don't have core and when you do have core, you get differences in the heating and it creates a little low spot. So I have to fix that. Um, and here's the redrive. So I'm doing a test here to see how the oil flows through there. I've got a syringe and I'm actually squirting oil through the two different inlet feeds. And I found a problem in that um, it's flowing too easily through the main feed. And it's because of these channels there that feed the uh, thrust washers. So I need to uh, resolve that. And meanwhile, uh, here's Devin um, putting the uh, hinges on that uh, aileron that was just closed out yesterday. Um, he's riveting those into place. Uh, along with um, you know putting some high sole on there and with the redrive with respect to those channels that were feeding the thrust washers that's something that I kind of thought we needed to put in when we were doing the design um, but it turns out I don't think they're warranted so uh, my plan is uh, for at least for this prototype there is just to block them up with some um, some uh, JB weld and uh, there'll still be plenty of oil uh, getting to the thrust washers via the sides of the journal bearing so uh, we're going to try that and see how that works out and there you can see uh, Devon's finished putting those hinges on and the other thing on the redrive that I found too was I'm, I'm fairly sure now that um, the extra material that I took off of those oil rings that have the high pressure feed I may have taken too much off there there's not that much um, play in that 
in the whole the shaft anymore given that um, the thrust washers are in there now so uh, we're gonna have to just wait and see on that I may have to get those rings remade but we've got you know plenty of time for that um, it's not like it's gonna slow us down and there's the oven uh, getting fired up there for the second round second wing and there's the first wing again as I said, uh, on the upper surface there is mainly where it is, just where the spar um, is in the middle there. There's kind of like a low spot that's going to need a little bit of fill, uh, a little bit of body work in there to fix that. That's just something that happens. And uh, Devin in the afternoon was uh, drilling the holes there for the headphone and mic jacks, as well as the USB power. And you can see he's got the USB power outlet mounted in there. This is the back of the center console for the back seats. And uh, let's see, what's next? Uh, Jeff has got the first set of ribs on the um, first uh, or the left side uh, elevator there uh, bonded in onto the skin. So those can get match drilled on Monday and then the other side ribs put in and um, we'll test to make sure that that thing's uh, moving the way it's supposed to. And uh, late towards the end of the day there on Friday, uh, Devin also got the main key power um, switch there put in to the console so this is how you'll actually turn on power to the ship just with this key and you can pull the key out once it's powered on um, so that sort of stop anybody from just getting in the aircraft and just pressing a you know master switch and turning all the power on which don't really want that I don't think it's ideal and here's one of those strake fences there just sort of clamped into place there on the end of the strake so you can see how that's going to look so it protrudes about three inches out the front and a couple inches underneath and it has the hole in the bottom there where you'll be able to put a carabiner through there and it'll double as a tie down for the aircraft so neat and clean and nothing movable to go wrong and it's plenty strong enough because it doesn't actually have to hold the aircraft down or anything like that and so here's the redrive one more time and as you can see there's where I've put my little bit of JB weld in there in that little channel that feeds the uh, thrust washers. The problem was it was just um, the oil was just getting through there too easily and it was going to compromise the 60 psi on the engine so now's the time to get that done. Anyway that's our update for this week and our last update for 2018. Next update will probably be next Saturday because of New Year's. Thanks again for watching and following along and uh, hopefully you'll see this thing flying sometime in 2019.